All right, so um, right now we're just going to um, ask to come up our uh, third presenter. I just saw him. Oh, there he is. Michael Bradway. Brother Michael Bradway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I stand here after coming after such a giant. I, I, it seems as though all that I have to say has already been said. Um, i sitting over here and, and, and everything that I'm hearing in a class, I'm hearing these two giants speak of. But today I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about your struggles. Amen. I hear you, my brother. I, I, I understand everything that you were saying. As soon as you start to, to talk, the first thing that came to mind was today, if you hear my voice, heart not your heart, God speaks in ways that we don't understand, but it's that silent voice that Pastor is talking about that moves us to do. It may feel uncomfortable. I was, I was in, in, in BJ's just here the other day, and I, I'm not working no more, but there was a gentleman that walked up to my wife and said, you know, your husband, when I told him that I had cancer, he just stood up right in the middle of the aisle with every person passing, and he just started to pray for me, and, and, and he never forgot me. It was that voice at that time that, that, that pushed me to do something like that, and I never would have done it because of I'm in leadership position. Here I am standing up in the aisle praying. That could never, that, that, that normally wouldn't happen. But I did. I did. And, and it moved me. I'm just going to begin to tell, just tell a sad story. A story that still grips me every time I, I talk his name or talk about it. It was in March of 2005 and I had just returned home um, after spending uh, what I described to be a cherished two weeks. The, mo the most cherished two weeks of my life. Two weeks which I had an opportunity to walk on the beach with my dad. Two weeks of, of, of talking, um, memories about growing up. Two weeks about uh, playing ball in, in, in the street. Just throwing ball and catching ball. It, it, it seemed trivial, but to me it was everything that I could ever think of doing with my dad. You see, my dad had Alzheimer's. And, and for that two weeks, it seemed as though he just came alive just for me. Because I, I, I can remember my mom calling me and saying, you know, your father's trying to step over the porch because he's going over into the infirmary just looking for you. Where are you? That hurt deeply because I'm a million miles away from my dad. Hi, baby. That, that's my granddaughter. That, that's one of the blessings that I received by coming to Christ. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm a million miles away and here my dad is asking for me. The one that probably give him the most headache and gray hairs, he's asking for me and, and he's getting away and the police is bringing him back because he's out there looking for me and and that tore me apart yeah but to see him playing with me that was a cherished moment and i asked my mom i said mom is dad getting well from the old timers she said no son prepare yourself i'll tell you what it is we the old people call it the light bulb effect. Anytime a light bulb is going out, yeah. you always get a brighter light. Mm. And then it goes boom, one time. And I didn't understand what she was trying to tell me as I, I, I wrestled with this 
words that she was telling me, and I, I, I wrestled with it. And two weeks and a day later, I understand what she was saying to me as my dad passed. me because it is something that I held on to, not because I want to hold on to it, but because of the relationship that my dad and myself share. Amen. Yes, like some, I was at a point of uncertainty, my faith wavered. I struggled with the question of why, but... My tears and my sorrow I had over. I had a talk with Jesus. I had a talk with God. And I told him it hurts. I told him it hurts. I was listening to a song just this morning, and, and it's a song that, that I grow to understand and like. Come. Jesus come by C.C. Winans, and it, it moved me because yes. everything that she says in her first stance are about getting on your knees and, 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 and praying. It feels as though you're broken. God broke me. I turn to the book of Lamentations and in Lamentations 3 you hear Jeremiah talking to God. And, and, and he said, you broke me, you, you tore me down, you, you damned my ministry. All of these things in Book of Lamentations, and that's where I, I, I got to a point where I was talking to God. Yes, to this day, let me say it again. It hurts because of my relationship. But I grow more and more closer to God, seeking guidance to deal with this pain. It becomes a lot easier. I can stand up and talk about it, even though the emotions start to rise. I can overcome it. In his book, The Problem of Pain, C.S. Lewis states, when we find ourselves in the deep end of suffering and despair, it's precisely at that point that God can come accomplish what is humanly impossible. He meets us at a height of our pain, surprising us with the grace and power that transforms our perspective of what this pain is. All right. The book of James, and, and as I, I continue to read more and more, and you hear God's voice, the book of, of, of James 1, 4, Doom for considerate pure joy, my brother, wherever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that testing of your faith develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature. You hear Pastor talk about becoming mature and complete in Christ. That's where we as Christians are heading. We are men that are called ahead. To a sense of maturity. It's not just what you have done right now, but you still got a ways to go. We, we have a ways to go to meet maturity. And you can only meet that maturity by bending your knees and praying, by going into your prayer room, your prayer closet, and asking God to show me the way. Creating me a new way, Lord. And renew within me the right spirit to hear your voice. To know that leadership and being in authority isn't all what it's about. But being humble. Show me this way, Lord. Show me how to get over this pain of these struggles that I'm going through. Let's continue. Peter strengthens us in his words. 
He said, Beloved, think it not strange the, fury, the fiery trials which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, yeah, me. May be glad about your exceeding joy. As Christians, we are going to suffer. As Christ suffer, because he is now in us, and we in him. And for what he went through, we must go through. There is no getting around it. There is no getting around it. This was my dad's verse, and it says, um, Philippians 4, 4 urges us to rejoice. It says rejoice in the Lord always. And then again I say to you rejoice. Not just in happy situations but rejoice in whatever you're going through. Your struggles, your pains. This is what Philippians is saying that you must rejoice. I, I, I started playing around with some of my Greek terms that I'm reading. Uh, but I, I love the Latin of, of this whole phrase. And, and, and it, 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 it's, it's angelio is the Latin term. But it gives you a more intense and description of your actions. It says to jump for joy. That may be hard sometimes when you're going through. It's hard to walk around with a smile on your face and not having to cuss some person out. It's hard. It's not an easy thing when my father passed to go down in AV and I still be the same director that I was called to be. At times I was a little grumpy and a lot of times she would tell me, honey, let's go home. You don't need to be here today. He damned my ministry. He tore me down. Mm. My brothers, you heard the knock on the door. You heard God's voice. You sought guidance as you set off along a road of life which God seemed to indicate. You answered a call. You thought it was going to be all peaches and cream. But as a result of this decision, you are experiencing all types of problems which brings immense suffering, which would not have happened. Which would not have happened apart from the fact that you follow the path of God's will on which you now travel or you're seeking to travel. Problems are going to come. Suffering comes in all forms. For some of you, it may be finance. For others, you hear Jonathan spoke this morning about his medical condition. It could be your daughter, it could be your actual ministry at church, it could be others around you. Paul in Corinthians allow us to know that he boasts about his suffering. Paul boasts about it. Don't just hold it to yourself, but tell others. Boast about your suffering. People need to hear your suffering. They need to hear everything that you're going through. I respect you for getting up and saying what you said this morning because others need to hear that. It's a, your testimony. It was one thing that Paul was encouraged to speak about when he was rejected. His mentor said, tell them your testimony. Allow them to know where you're coming from, that you're not all perfect. But tell them your testimony. He described his suffering as a thorn in the flesh. And I'm glad that the Bible never said what that thorn was. The 
because there are many different thorns in this room today. I don't know what your thorn is, but mine is walking with my father's memory in my heart, and it, every now and again, it throws me into a lean, and I get discouraged. The psalmist explains that even though you are following Christ, and you are struggling to be like he is, this, let me tell you what the psalmist said. The psalmist explains, trouble is not necessarily a sign of being out of God's will. Mm. The Bible declares that many of the afflictions of the righteous. Once you take that step, my brothers. Amen. And you say, God, I want to follow you. Satan becomes this cut upset because now you are where he used to be. And he doesn't want you to have the blessings that was taken away from him. So he's going to attack you. He's going to attack your daily life. He's going to attack you when you get up in the mornings and you look at your wife and want to push her off the bed. He's going to attack you in every level because he knows your weakness. So embrace your struggles. Embrace your struggles. With this immense suffering comes pain. It's, it's a spirit that is adopted by, let me use this term, by us men. When we find ourselves in situations that challenge us, we lose sight of God's promise to us. A promise that never to leave us nor forsake us. Never to leave us nor forsake us. And that is something that we need to walk with, knowing that he's always there. My, my wife have a poem that footprints in the sand, and I, I always delight to read it because it, it states that the footprints that you are seeing is not your footprints. Don't think they're yours. But it is that God is carrying you. With whatever you're going through, he's carrying you. You're looking over his shoulder at the footprints and you know that he's there. The assure, he, he assures us that your struggles are not the end, but he has a plan for you. That was Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah allows us to know that I don't, I'm not here to, to hurt you. But I got a plan for you. Amen. I got a plan for you. Yes, Lord. I feel you. Mm. The book of Thessalonians continue to support us and give us words to turn to when he said, The Lord is faithful and will strengthen you and protect you. At times, at times our selfish attitude pushes us to lean on our own understanding. And God's word said, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. Sometimes we get into struggles, and we just decide to turn to Google, YouTube, and Facebook for a more worldly excuse and direction. But God said, bring it over here. I've seen this before. It may seem as if God has turned his back on you when you pray and lament, but I urge you not to be dismayed. God will God allow you to go through these various struggles to test your faith and to be strengthened in him so that we can grow and mature spiritually and that he can look at you and hear you say like Job, though you slay me, yet... Um, Yet, well, I trust you. Yeah. Sometimes we give up hope when we go through struggles. Say that again. And we turn against God. Mm. Mm -mm. But here he is. After testing Job. After testing Job. Job turn around and say, Lord, I still trust you. And you are good. That's what, that's the attitude that we need to adopt. 
after jumping for joy, we got to be like Job and say, Lord, I trust you. Because he's going to take you true. It's the trials of your faith when you pray as Jesus did for God to let the cup of bitterness pass. Yet it does not pass. Instead, you are forced to drink deeply from, this, from its suffering. But our prayers are not unanswered just because they are not answered the way we want them to answer. I, I think my brother Coach just said that. Sometimes you be looking for a blue answer and a red answer pops up. He might tell you to go left when you're supposed to go right. Your answers are not always going to come as you want them. They're not always going to come on time. God has a plan for you. Any person in my family will tell you that Michael standing up there and speaking about God's grace and mercy is something that now, I don't know, I don't know, something happened. Amen. There are skeletons in my closet that would give reference to the fact that I am not supposed to be here. I should have been dead. I could be dead. I should have been dead, but it is God's grace and mercy and prayers that went up for the struggles that I was going to be having to bring me to this point. You hear pastor say this was not his truth. But somebody prayed. I, I, I stand and I talk to the, the pastor over at St. John who was who, who my brother and we moved together and we went around to colleges and looked for people and he said to me one day, he said, I, I prefer to be out there part. This was not my call. But God answers us in ways that we don't understand. His ways are not our ways. Paul viewed suffering as a servant. He said it it works for us when we keep our eyes on the eternal benefits instead of the problem. Mm -hmm. Let me, can, can I read that again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If, if you keep your eyes on the eternal benefits okay. instead of the problem, mm -hmm. a lot of us like to just hold on to things. Mm -hmm. yes. I want to hold on to this because this is what makes me feel comfortable right, right now. Right. That's That's right. Right. Your pastor yeah. talked about holding on to the bottle. Right. Holding on to various things in your life that just keep you stagnant for a while. But as it goes away, the problem recovers. But if you focus more on the benefits, everything in your spiritual world is based on faith. That's why it's tested. That's why it's tested. That's why we go through so many things that we go through. Just to hear God say, well done, you came through this. Now I can give you a little bit more. But your faith must be tested. If your faith is weak, you're going to stay right here until he thinks it is strong enough to allow Satan to sift you like wheat. Because as long as you answer that knock on the door, your faith will be tested. As long as you enter into that church door and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other hand outside on the streets help me. You were, your faith will be tested. But there is a turn to it. Once your faith is strong, your suffering brings spiritual blessings. Once your faith is strong, when you can stand up and proclaim and call his name and accept him as Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior of your life, when you can continue to drink from the cup of sorrows and suffering and bitterness, there is a reward. 
I, I think that's a hallelujah right there yeah, if I'm in a Baptist church. Yeah. If I'm in a church where, where men are professing to be, uh, mm, that, that's a hallelujah. There is a blessing. Yeah, yeah. Suffering brings spiritual blessings. Mm -hmm. It is true adversity that you move beyond the calling as a child of God and become chosen of God. Many are called, but very few are chosen of God. You see, you got to work up to a point of maturity. It is true adversity that you move beyond the calling as a child of God and, and, and become chosen of God. Afflictions occur to the will of God referred to refines us. Your afflictions refine you as metal is refined in the furnace. This morning, I, I, I just had to tell Pastor, he said, uh, uh, Minister Brad, I said, not yet. God is still working on me. I'm, I'm, he's taking out the lumps. Amen. There's a lot of lumps that need to come out because if you Watch a potter. If he takes the, the clay off to worry, it cracks. But stay on the wheel as God refines you. There's some cracks that need to be taken out. Go through your suffering. There's some cracks that need. He's taking out some cracks in your life. Amen. He's separating you from some of the things that you find comfortable in doing. And all this is on the wheel. And, and, and he's working the wheel. Don't be anxious to get off the wheel. Don't be anxious to get out of your problems. Come on. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Stay, there. Stay there. He's working with you. Yeah, he's he's just, I just, and, 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 and Ezekiel say, I see a wheel in the wheel. By going through your adversity, <clears throat> looking at the eternal benefits instead of the problem, drinking deeper and deeper from the cup of bitterness, mm -hmm. your blessings will come. Amen. Let, let's talk about this. It, you are now able to comfort others. Amen. You can tell some person how you got over. Second Corinthians talk about it. He said, tell some person else so that they can get over. How did you stop doing this? How did you stop womanizing? How did you stop having a wow. death on the side? How did you stop looking at us? Oh my God. Tell you. me. Thank you. Thank you, God. Because I need to know that is your charge. You. To tell some person how you got over. By staying in the struggle, the work of God manifests in you. God manifests himself in you. The power of God is perfected in you. The unstable in your life is removed. <coughs> Excuse me. Your focus is changed. You no longer focus on little things, but you focus on Christ, the solid rock on which you should stand all of the ground. A yes. sinking sand. Your focus begins to change. You want to know how to hear God's word? How, how to hear God speaking to you? Your focus got to change. Yes. You need to just kneel and pray a little longer. Amen. You need to get into God's word and start reading because today, Hebrews say today, if you hear my voice. Mm. And then it, it goes a little further and says, my sheep knows my voice. That's right. That's right. So as That's long right. as you start praying and talking to him, don't treat him like a spare tie in the back of your car that you only pull out on emergencies. That's right. That's right. But treat him like the, the steering wheel on your car. Don't, don't go with no electric car. Right. Because you can let that go and you drive yourself. But I want you to hold on. Hold on to 
that steering wheel yeah, yeah, yeah. because that steering wheel is what's going to guide you, change your focus, change lanes. Instead of having any the high speed lane all the time, sometimes you might just need to go in the slow lane and slow down and have a little talk with Jesus. Amen. Early in the morning, you might just need to pull away from some of your friends that are doing things that are not comfortable and have a little talk with him. This is the encouragement that I was charged to bring you today. The word of God within you is tested. The word of God within you is tested. How often do you read your word? You want to hear his voice, his voice is in your word. He speaks through you through your word. God still speaks to us. He speaks to us through his word. By just looking at his word and reading it and studying it. And going beyond what you hear on Sunday mornings, you got to dig in your word and find out everything the pastor say. Is, is it true? Where did he get this from? Try a little bit of this. Try a little bit of that. I'm trying. I like going. I'm trying a little bit of Greek and a little bit of Latin. Father, I can't do this alone. I can't do this alone. It's at that moment. He said, I thank God for the mountains. Can I, can I take out that mountain and put a struggle in here? Mm -hmm. I thank God for the struggles. I thank him for the low valleys. When I was at that point of depression and, 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 and I was down there, I was low. He said, I, I thank him for the loneliness. I thank him for the storms he brought me through. For I never had, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God can solve them. That's right. That's right. I would never know the power of God. He says to Paul, in your weakness, I am not going to take this thorn from you, but because in your weakness, I am strong. I am strong. Gentlemen, he said because of it, he never knew that God can solve it. And then he ended by saying, through it all, through it all. Come on, I know y'all know the song. Through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend. I, I see Mr. 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 Dotton with a stick. I've learned to depend. I've, that's it. I've learned to depend on this because there's some of our suffering that's not going to go nowhere. Right. But God gives us support to lean on Him right. every now and again. Right. There's some of us that have, I hear Reverend Brown talked about his father and had a, 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 a chip, a piece of metal in the back of his head. But he didn't try to get it out. He leaned on it and Amen. used it. God uses it. Amen. Sometimes God uses a lot of stuff. A lot of us in here, maybe. So we might have a prostate problem. We are men, and we are black men. But there are others that need to hear it from you so they can just lean on you. Because God has put you in a position for them to lean on you. You are his voice. You are his arms. You are his eyes. You are what God wants you to be. That's why he called you. Amen. Amen. Gentlemen, I hope I answered a question oh, yes. about your oh, suffering yes. today. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know. I speak to some of you. I can only pray with you. But God knows. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And He will strengthen you through your adversity. Everything to God. Thank you. Amen. Oh, you got to 
give God some more praise and honor. Through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus and I learned to trust in God. That's the encouraging word that no matter what we go through, we can get through it with God on our sides. We are so thankful for this day and we're so blessed.